the first line management for any patient of hyperkalemia would be to give calcium gluconate that's again important because you see you are trying to neutralize the effect of potassium on the heart potassium relaxes calcium causes contraction Hi guys, welcome back. So the next topic we are studying is ECG changes in hyperkalemia and hypokalemia. The basic concept that I wanted to remember for this topic would be related to T wave amplitude. I have explained to you that the height of the T wave when it comes to the limb leads is less than 5 mm, the chest leads would be less than 10 mm and this value or this amplitude is directly related to potassium gradient or potassium values per se. So the message is that whenever potassium will rise, the height of the T waves will also rise. If the potassium values will fall, the T wave amplitude will begin to fall. So if they ask you what is the early ECG finding or earliest ECG finding in a patient who is suffering from hyperkalemia, your answer would be given as tall tented T waves. I have already highlighted and I am repeating that again. Do not mistake that or confuse that with hyperacute T waves. Hyperacute T waves will be having a relatively rounded edge and they are encountered in myocardial infarction whereas when it comes to tall tented T waves they are relatively pointed and in fact the height of these can be even more than that of the R waves. So I am just going to sketch those tall tented R waves before you. This is what I said. If you are going to encounter a person who is having hyperkalemia the amplitude of the T wave will dramatically increase and there is a distinct possibility that the height might even exceed the height of the R wave per se. So I have at the moment sketched tall tented T wave. Then I want to tell you that ST segment will always follow the T wave. In this case as you can notice when the T wave amplitude is going up then this ST segment per se will also start following the T wave per se. So the second ECG finding that you need to remember and should be answered is ST segment elevation and following that the third point is even more important. In fact there are a lot of conditions for ST segment elevation. I want to highlight that from the mnemonic by the name of elevation that I have discussed earlier. In elevation the alphabet E was standing for electrolytes only and the electrolyte is the one that we are discussing at the moment that would be hyperkalemia. The third point to be remembered is that per se in this condition the repolarization vector has become more prominent but the depolarization vector will become relatively less prominent so therefore the height of the P wave the first wave of the ECG will start becoming relatively smaller and lots of questions you will notice that it might be written that the P wave of the patient is even absent. I want you to remember that this would usually be seen when the potassium values hit start hitting the value of 7 milli equivalents or more but once the P wave is absent because I have taught you P wave absent in patients of atrial fibrillation, P wave is absent in patients who are having a SA nodal dysfunction that is sick sinus syndrome but now there is a third condition added that is hyperkalemia. Also because the depolarization speed is affected the PR interval per se would be prolonged. So please remember the fact that depolarization current is being affected at this moment. So the amplitude of P wave is also lesser and the PR uh, in du uh, interval duration is also substantially increased. Since potassium slows the heart, I mean the bottom line is slows the heart, therefore the QRS complex will also relatively become broader. Previously I have talked about QRS complex being broad with respect to ventricular tachycardia and torsade disc depointes, but potassium slows the heart so QRS is broad and now comes another key aspect which I want you to mentally visualize. See what is happening in this patient is that the height of the P wave is becoming lesser lesser and is disappearing. The QRS complex of this person is broadening. I'll say that again. P wave is disappearing. QRS is broadening. Now mentally visualize that the broad QRS will merge with the T wave. When the broad QRS will merge with the T wave, it will result in development of what is called as sine wave pattern. And that's again very characteristic. Approximately at values hitting 8 milliequivalents or more, you get a sine wave pattern. This is bad news because now this person can go into a diastolic arrest. In fact, if they ask you what is the reason for death in a person suffering from hyperkalemia, the primary reason why a person can expire is due to diastolic arrest. In fact, sometimes you might even read about arrhythmia. The arrhythmia that will occur will be a ventricular fibrillation, but then subsequently there will be a flat line and the heart will stop in diastole. Why? Because calcium causes contraction. So you will notice that in endocrinology, I have spoken calcium when it is going to values of 13, 14, going on towards 15, it will cause systolic arrest and potassium values when they go towards 8 or more, then the chances of expiry of the patient are dramatically increased. Now we need to understand what are we going to do for this. 
the learning movement at points at the moment are T wave height is increasing, ST is going up, QRS is broadening, PR is broadening and the P wave is disappearing. If you just get this impression right, you would be able to solve these questions related to findings of hyperkalemia. Uh, three conditions where P waves have been told to be absent are atrial fibrillation, six sinus syndrome and at the moment hyperkalemia again. Now let us study regarding what is the treatment which would be offered for these patients. The first line management for any patient of hyperkalemia would be to give calcium gluconate. That's again important because you see you are trying to neutralize the effect of potassium on the heart. Potassium relaxes. Calcium causes contraction. So you can give calcium gluconate. You can give calcium chloride. Both are okay. In fact, calcium chloride is even more efficacious than calcium gluconate. But do not answer by mistake calcium carbonate because calcium carbonate is oral. No, the routine tablets of calcium that you write for your uh, antenatal patients is calcium carbonate. That's an oral molecule. Whereas we are talking about an intravenous molecule. And the advantage of this is that this will antagonize the elevated potassium because potassium causes relaxation calcium causes contraction but it will not cause a decrease in the value of serum potassium if you want the potassium to decrease from 8 to 7 to let me say 6 and 5 then you need to start the person on insulin drip so how is insulin drip working it is causing redistribution of potassium it will send potassium inside the cells and the magnitude of sending potassium inside the cells would be approximately 0.5 to 1 milliequivalent per hour I want to highlight that this is one of the most efficacious drugs that you can use to reduce the value of potassium in life-threatening situations. I hope you remember the fact that when it comes to chronic hyperkalemia, then we use potassium binding drugs. We use novel drugs like Patiromer. The current drug for treatment of chronically elevated hyperkalemia situation would be Patiromer. But in acute hyperkalemia, which I'm discussing at the moment, along with the ECG aspects that I highlighted in the previous slide, I would be starting the person on calcium gluconate, then on insulin drip. The next thing we're going to use is salbutamol nebulization. Now that's again surprising because normally we talk about salbutamol being used in COPD slash asthma. Why are we using salbutamol in this case is because even it will potentiate the action of insulin and again will achieve the same thing. It will help in sending potassium inside the cells. However, the next drug that I will use will be having a different mechanism of action. This will be causing a urinary loss of potassium. I will be achieving caliuria by giving furosemide to the patient. I want you to remember the fact that when it comes to furosemide, this drug is definitely useful. Why? Because it is causing loss of potassium, whereas the previous drugs that is second entry and third entry, insulin, salbutamol, they are causing a redistribution. If all above maneuvers will fail, I still have something uh, or I would say the last bullet that I can fire to fight the disease is hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is the most effective treatment for a person of acute life-threatening hyperkalemia. Please appreciate the words that I've said, most effective drug versus most effective treatment. If he says the word drug per se, then the most effective. If he says first line drug, drug of choice, I've already highlighted that and I'm just going to put arrows there to say this is going to be the first line management. This would be answered as drug of choice, but it does not affect the potassium values. If he says which is the most effective drug to lower the values of elevated potassium, it is insulin drip and do not make a mistake. If he's going to be talking about a patient of CKD, if he's going to talk about a chronic hyperkalemia, then what we are talking about is patty rumor. Along with patiromer, there are other molecules also like sodium zirconate. We can obviously use resins also like sodium polystyrene sulfonate. You can go to the CKD section where I've talked about chronic hyperkalemia. And another point that I, since I have an opportunity now to say is if somebody is having chronic hyperkalemia plus hypertension, then we can still give AC inhibitor. How can we give AC inhibitor? We know AC inhibitors cause hyperkalemia now. I have highlighted this in the CKD section. I'm teaching you here also. If a person is having hyperkalemia, let me say potassium values of 6. And he's having hypertension also. He says don't stop ACE inhibitor, continue ACE inhibitor, but give petty rumor. He says for a petty reason like hyperkalemia, you cannot, cannot lose out on the benefit of ACE inhibitors for any hypertensive patient, let me say CKD patient, because ultimately cardiovascular mortality is the biggest cause of death in patients of chronic kidney disease. 
you see like i can take name of uh, our former uh, minister Shish, uh, shushma swaraj ji she was a diabetic patient she had ckd and she had a cardiac event due to which she died the point is cardiovascular events are so common in patients of chronic kidney disease that you have to neutralize the high renin you need to neutralize the high ras values by using in the patient per se uh, ac inhibitor so uh, never be afraid to give ac inhibitors even if our potassium values are elevated you do have drugs which are very efficacious and can decrease the values of potassium which are chronically elevated if it's acute hyperkalemia then obviously this concept is not valid then you definitely need to give the strategy that i have highlighted before you and uh, the person will be on the way to recovery let us compare this now with hypokalemia like let me say my patient is having uh, diarrhea and he is having this electrolyte imbalance or post-operatively because of recurrent episode of vomiting there is a secondary hyperaldosteronism and then a hypokalemia due to loss of potassium in the urine if a person is having hypokalemia, even then muscle cramps will ensue, weakness will occur. The question is why would a hypokalemia patient expire? Like potassium decreased from 3.5 to 5.5 to let me say 1.5. The person has expired. Why? Because there is a muscle paralysis. So if he says what is the reason for death in hyper K, it is a diastolic arrest, but this time it is a diaphragmatic paralysis. Now let us look at what are going to be the important theory points for hypokalemia. First and the foremost would be this time because uh, the potassium values are becoming lesser the height of the t wave will also become lesser in the patient so i am highlighting that there is a possibility that even the t wave might be absent or might even become inverted the statement i made was initial finding will be decrease in the amplitude of the t wave then it can become absent in some cases it can be inverted t wave as well now what are the conditions that are taught you where inverted t waves can be present that is unstable angina. Inverted T waves have been discussed for non ST elevation MI and right now are being taught even for hypokalemia. So, do remember the three scenarios. Like I taught you earlier, absent P waves in atrial fibrillation, sick sinus, and hyperkalemia. I've taught you three scenarios for inverted T waves as well. Now, because T and ST go together, ST loves to follow the T wave. Now, because the T wave is going down, therefore in this patient they would be st segment depression so the ecg of the same patient might look a little different which i'm now trying to sketch before you with the st segment depression and a t wave inversion you can notice that i've tried to show a st segment depression at this particular point of time now as the potassium values will fall even further you will notice that the amplitude of the first wave in the ecg the p wave amplitude will rise Remember when I was teaching you hyperkalemia, I said P wave was becoming smaller, smaller and was disappearing. Here it will be ulta, it will be reverse. The height of the P wave will start increasing in the patient. And therefore, you will notice that because there is an increase in the vertical height of the P wave, a very interesting term would come up here that is called as pseudo P pulmonial and has been one of the questions in the NEET exam. The point to be understood is pseudo p pulmonale basically implies or basically explains that the amplitude of the p wave or the height of the p wave is more than 2.5 millimeter in absence mark my words there the p wave height is more than 2.5 millimeter in the absence of the word is in the absence of pulmonary artery hypertension because traditionally we read about p wave which is more than 2.5 in ph here there is no per se i would say pulmonary artery hypertension due to any etiology and still the p wave height is increased the next point is again important because now there will be a development of what is called as prominent u waves please remember u waves can be seen in ecg of a normal person also but when I say the word prominent U waves, that is definitely a feature of hypokalemia. So now I'm going to draw additional wave here. This was the inverted T and I've shown a prominent U also. In some MCQs, to trouble you, he may not say this prominent U waves because he assumes that you would have already studied. So he might say prolonged QT interval. Again, because the gradients across the heart of electrolytes are affected, therefore all these parameters tend to become deranged. So there will be a prolonged QT and there will also be a prolonged PR. Please appreciate the fact that whether potassium becomes more, whether potassium becomes lesser because the gradient of voltage is changing. 
because the gradient of voltage inside and outside is changing pr interval is prolonged in both hypo and hyperkalemia guys that's an important point which lot of people tend to miss i wanted to remember pr interval can be prolonged in both hypo and hyperkalemia why that is so is primarily because the gradient is changing i can go into the mathematics of that also i'll i'll put plus minus plus minus values that will not add up to the final output because ultimately what you need to realize is this common thing there's no disparity in this i mean lot of people think pr interval is going to be less in one prolonged in another no it is prolonged in both of them that's a that's an important parameter that decides mcq performance i mean lots of guys are not able to relate to this initially but as i highlighted it is a potassium gradient which is going to change and going to affect or rather is going to make the speed of conduction slower like you can understand like this the speed of conduction is based on normal electrolyte balance if it's more if it is lesser the normal flow of gradient is definitely affected and therefore there can be a prolonged uh, pr interval now look at what i'm saying undivided attention please in lot of questions he may deliberately not mention regarding prolonged qt why because t wave might have disappeared so what will he write he will write prolonged qu interval and to a careless reader it might look like this is a error on the part of the examiner it is not a error guys it's a deliberate trick prolonged qu interval is a correct statement why is it a correct statement because t is not there no because t is not there that is why he is saying a prolonged qu interval the bottom line is hypokalemia patients can even develop a arrhythmia because a said prolonged qt no if there is a qt prolongation guys which arrhythmia develops the answer is torsades d pointes i want to remind you that in hyperkalemia you will usually read about if potassium is more ventricular fibrillation if there is a hypokalemia if he says what is the tachyarrhythmia i'm not saying this is very common but yeah it can be asked if he says what is the tachyarrhythmia seen in hypokalemia the answer is torsades d pointes but if he says what is the leading cause of death don't answer torsades d pointes the answer is diaphragmatic paralysis these are some important aspects which i wanted to remember and personally speaking if you have to uh, remember this data i mean should you remember hyper or hypo i would suggest you to remember hypovolemia most of us tend to neglect the findings because you know hyper is very characteristic sine wave pattern and other aspects which i have highlighted so most people are able to relate to it and answer correctly examiner knows that so you will notice examiners lots of time deliberately asking aspects related to hypokalemia like i suddenly out of the blue said okay tell me which tachyarrhythmia now we were thinking terms of diaphragmatic paralysis suddenly so, arrhythmia also jumped up that is tdp torsades d pointes remember hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia can contribute to torsades d pointes now we will look at the treatment of this patient which is potassium chloride but we'll obviously not give it undiluted if we give it undiluted heart will stop no so we always have to give it diluted what is the rate of which uh, rate at which potassium can be given from at a, from a peripheral line because you see if you have given potassium you know it causes thrombophlebitis so the rate at which it can be given is usually 20 to 40 milliequivalents per hour when it comes to the correction of hypokalemia that is discussed in the electrolyte section like if they ask you a question how much potassium replacement is to be given to somebody over 24 hours how many milliequivalents the formula for that is discussed in the first lecture of kidney section where I have discussed regarding electrolytes per se there i have mentioned regarding the correction of hyponatremia in fact correction of hyponatremia hypernatremia is also covered here my main focus was to sensitize you to the changes in the amplitude of the various waves and especially the common factor of prolonged pr interval try to remember the hypokalemia component guys and you will definitely find that you will be able to remember this information relatively better so let's do a quick summary guys so that i can be sure that you remembered everything that i have said for this particular topic especially at the right hand side the hypokalemia one i have told you that because the arrow is going up the t wave height will also go up so this is going to be tall tented t waves and st is going to follow it so st elevation the counterpart information will be on the opposite side the t wave amplitude will reduce and will become absent and concomitantly there will be st segment depression developing in the patient on the left hand side the p wave in the ecg will begin to disappear whereas on this side the amplitude of the p wave will start to rise in the absence of pulmonary artery hypertension so i'm going to call it a pseudo p pulmonary then a new wave that can gener be generated here what i mean by new is that it would be becoming prominent that is prominent u wave otherwise u wave can be found in ecg of a normal person as well the common information between the two is pr prolongation which is seen with both because potassium gradients will affect the conduction from sno to the av node 
coming to the drug of choice for the left hand side i have already sensitized you the drug of choice is calcium gluconate though i mentioned couple of other aspects including that for chronic hyperkalemia right side give potassium chloride along with iv fluids and uh, these are the details that i want you to remember guys so keep hammering keep learning and you will do great in the exam